Gentlemen of the court, it is a dark hour indeed when an officer of the United States Army stands accused of cowardice. But the prosecution's case is clear. On the night of August the 13th, in this year of 1873, the entire garrison at Fort Bennett was massacred by the Cheyenne enemy. Not a single life was spared, and a valuable military outpost was burned to the ground. And all this during... during the unauthorized absence of its commanding officer. Surely, gentlemen, there are few more reprehensible crimes than that described in the 42nd Article of War. Desertion to avoid hazardous duty. But under that article, Captain Jeremy Davis stands to be convicted. I call upon this court-martial to find Captain Davis guilty as charged, and as punishment to suffer death. The prosecution arrests its case. Thank you, Captain Woods. The court will hear the defense. Gentlemen. Inasmuch as Captain Davis is admittedly the sole survivor of the tragic massacre at Fort Bennett, the, uh, the defense has been at some disadvantage in preparing its case. The members of the court I have all considered the defendant's original deposition. He may stand on that if he wishes, or he may testify now. I'd like to testify, Lieutenant. If you testify, they'll cross-examine you. I'm not afraid to defend my story. If you want my advice, you'll throw yourself on the mercy of the court. I'm not guilty. I want to tell my story. Not very proud of it, but it's the truth. I'll answer any questions they care to ask. The accused will take the stand. Raise your right hand, sir. Do you swear that the testimony you will give in this case now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. State your name, rank, organization, and station. Jeremy Davis, Captain Cavalry, lately of Fort Bennett. Proceed, Captain. I assumed command of Fort Bennett on 30 June of this year. I relieved Lieutenant Richard Bowden, who was temporarily in command. I arrived with Lieutenant Thomas Reese at the same order. As the record shows, this was my first field command. Perhaps due to my inexperience, I may have expected too much. But when I arrived, it seemed to me that Fort Bennett was in a hopeless state of disorganization and disorder. I doubt if this weapon could even be fired. You don't need a thing like that to fight Indians, Captain. All you need is a little guts. Nevertheless, I think it will be wise to keep our equipment in good condition. Lieutenant Reese? Sir. Hereafter, please conduct a weekly inspection of all weapons and equipment. Yes, sir. Captain, we don't go in for that spit and polish you're used to in Washington. I'll set a couple of men to cleaning that gun in a day or so. I think you'd better do it today. I'd like to see the post infirmary now. Certainly, sir. Right this way. Lieutenant Bolton's resentment of me was apparent from the beginning. But the responsibility for command was mine now, and I meant to accept it. Doctor, looks as if you've been busy. Yes, sir. The Cheyennes have raided us every few days. The infirmary's not very well equipped. No, sir. I've turned in requisitions for supplies, but... Well, I guess the paperwork's been a little slow. Lieutenant Reese. I want you to stay with the doctor. Find out what he needs and see that he gets it. Yes, sir. Thank you, doctor. Bolton, I want to talk to you. It's inexcusable to let the fort get into this condition. 
the Cheyenne knew the extent of our casualties, they'd wipe us out. A few Indians ain't gonna lick us, as long as we're not scared of them. A few? Don't you ever look at your scouting reports? Two Moon's entire tribe is in this area. Well, Captain, if you got no stomach for fighting, maybe you ought to turn the job over to somebody else. Bolton, listen to me. I think I know how you feel. From all I've heard, when Captain Burns was killed and you took over, you did a fine job. Perhaps you should have been left in command. Yeah, a fat chance. I know the high brass captain. The man up from the ranks don't cut no ice with him. When the time comes for promotions or good assignments, what do they do? They take some fellow in Washington out from behind his desk and give it to him. The Army needs men with staff experience, and it needs men with field experience. Out in this country, Captain, it needs men that like a good scrap. But no Indians, and no the Plains. You're a tough, brave officer. I don't question that. But I'm in command here. I need your cooperation. You'll have it, sir. But I mean to show you and anybody else that's watching that Dick Bolton's as good a man as any around. Colonel Carter. Gentlemen. Yes, Captain. I object to this testimony, sir. Captain Davis is on trial here, not Lieutenant Bolton. Captain. You have no right to attack the reputation of a man who died valiantly while you were running away. I assure you, it's very difficult to say these things about a man who can't be here to defend himself. But in the light of what happened later, I felt the court had to know the situation. The court assumes the defendant will explain how this account of alleged friction between himself and a junior officer pertains to the charges, Captain. However, I believe that the records do show that throughout the entire war between the states, you were stationed in Washington. Yes, sir. Secret Service. But, Colonel, I repeatedly requested combat duty. Still, for whatever reasons, you were never entrusted with frontline command. No, sir. Proceed, Captain. The trouble was that the time was coming when it would be difficult to maintain discipline. Not only were there scouting reports that the Cheyenne were massing a great force against us, but there was a new threat within the fort itself, a threat of panic. Captain. What is it, Doctor? Will you come with me, sir? Of course. What's the trouble? It's Lieutenant Reese. He's... he's been taken ill. Reese? What's the matter with him? I can't say for certain yet. But I'm afraid... it's smallpox. understand my anxiety, gentlemen. Here was an enemy that none of us knows how to fight. Epidemic. Don't look at me like that, Captain. I'm not dying. He'll have to be isolated right away for observation. Isolated? What's wrong with me? Well, Tom, the doctor seems to think you may have smallpox. <laughs> There's a small storeroom that's out of the way. Can we put him in there? Yes, sir. Fine. Corporal, get a couple of men from the drill ground. I have a job for them. Doc, it's just a belly ache. Maybe, Reese. I hope so. What are the symptoms? Fever, muscular pains. How long before you can be sure? Oh, several days. Smallpox. Now, take it easy, Tom. We'll do all we can. Besides, it's probably only a false alarm. Sure. You men carry Lieutenant Reese to the storeroom by the south wall. Carry him? That's right. Get that stretcher and carry him. He's got smallpox. I heard you. Smallpox! Keep your voice down. The plague. We got the plague in here? Don't use that word, soldier. There's nothing certain yet. You got no right to make us get near him, Doc. It's too dangerous. Get that stretcher. And carry him. Come back here. You two men have refused a direct order. Report to me later for punishment and bring that man with you. Well, I'd just as soon be punished as get the smallpox. Once you get the smallpox... As you were, Corporal. Give me a hand, Doctor. You have no right to let Reese stay here. Let him stay here. Send him away, Captain. Get him away from us. There's a whole tribe of Indians out there. Send a patrol with him. 
Let them take him back to Fort Laramie, where there's a hospital. That's out of the question. If we could spare a patrol, I doubt if it could get through. Now get hold of yourself, Lieutenant. The men are going to be frightened enough. I'm counting on you to keep your head. Keep my head? This is what happens. They send us a pen pusher from Washington. As you were, Lieutenant. I don't want to hear you mention Washington again. I'm in command here, and I'm perfectly capable of doing the job. Now get on about your duties. Yes, sir. Bolton's bitterness hampered his judgment, gentlemen. He indulged in loose talk and criticism. I regret to say it, but that's the truth. For four days, we watched Lieutenant Reese's progress, while our scouts continued their reports of the Cheyenne buildup. I knew that at any moment, we could be hit by a vicious attack. <laughs> something to help a little. And I still can't be sure, but he's a very sick man. I almost wish the Cheyenne would attack. At least to give the men something to think about besides Reese. Yeah. I'm getting more nervous all the time. I had seven more on sick call this morning, all smallpox cases. Seven? Not a thing wrong with any of them. Uh, if our friend Bolton would just stop his vivid descriptions of the perils of the plague. I know. You know, these are brave men. And they're fighting something they can understand. You've got a bear by the tail, haven't you, Captain? change. I began to think perhaps I should apply here at Laramie for reinforcements. I was no longer sure I could count on my own men in an attack. At first, I decided to reconnoiter the entire area for myself. I was gone all morning, and I found that the Cheyenne forces were even stronger than I'd feared. But when I returned to the fort, I was even more alarmed. The main gate was open and unguarded. There were no sentries on the parapet. your minds, every one of you. Get back to your post. Did you hear me? Now break it up. You two men, take Lieutenant Reese to the firm. that gun, Captain. Reese is going out of here. You don't dare kill me, Bolton. Bring up those two horses. No, I ain't gonna kill you, Captain. But you're leaving this fort, and you're taking your sick friend with you. Mutiny? You'd better think it over, Bolton. I'll see that you stand before a court-martial within a week. If you can make it to Laramie, you do that. Colonel Carter will give me a medal. You're ruining your whole career. I'm saving these men's lives. You set us up for two moons to wipe us out. You've exposed us to the plague. I'm doing the best thing that ever happened to Fort Bennett. Now get mounted. You've got rations and water to get you through to Laramie. It's only 70 miles. Captain, stay here. I'll go alone. Tom, you can hardly stay in that saddle. Sure, I understand you, Captain. 
you contend Lieutenant Bolton actually forced you to leave Fort Bennett at the point of a gun? Yes, sir. But please remember, Colonel, I'm convinced that he thought he was doing the right thing. If the court permit, this is the most fantastic testimony that I've ever listened to. It's the truth. It's as cowardly as your desertion, Captain. Throwing the blame on a dead man, knowing that there were no witnesses. Sir, Major Hollis is a medical officer of many years of experience. I've asked him to assist the prosecution in checking these wild rumors of alleged plague and disease. Will the defendant agree to questioning by Major Hollis? Of course, sir. Captain, you're asking us to believe that this panic among the men took place before you were sure that Reese had smallpox? Yes, sir. Would you describe his symptoms to us again, please? Well, he complained of headaches, backache. He was feverish. You're absolutely certain you never heard Dr. Nelson consider the common cold? Never, sir. Was there any rash, any eruption of the skin? Well, after we left the fort, he, he seemed... Well, he, he looked inflamed. Sir, I'm not a doctor. I... You were several days in the hot sun. Couldn't that account for the inflamed skin? Yes, sir, it could. I know of no incidence of uh, smallpox contagion in this area, Colonel. I, uh, I'm afraid I find this story difficult to believe. Very difficult. But Reese wasn't from this area. If you only had one witness, Captain, if Reese himself were here... Gentlemen, you've got to believe me. When we left the fort, Lieutenant Reese could hardly stay on his horse. Reese, come! Captain, go on without me. Don't be foolish. Those Indians will find you. Here, drink some water. <coughs> They'll never make it, Captain. Go on by yourself. You think you can stand? You're gonna ride with me. <laughs> Somehow, we avoided the Indian war parties. But we had to change direction so often, I was no longer sure where we were. And late on the second day, began to look as if Reese would never make it. Tom, you gotta eat something. Tom? You know what I'm gonna buy for Mother's birthday? A nice little cameo brooch. What'd you say? It's all right, I can afford it, Father. I've saved the money. Tom. 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 All right. I know it's something she's always wanted. I remember we were walking down Main Street together. She stopped at the jewelry store, pointed out a little brooch. Lieutenant Reese died during the night. I buried him in that grove of trees. A day and a half later, one of your patrols from Fort Laramie found me. They'd just come from Fort Bennett. They told me the massacre. When they learned who I was, they looked at me as if I were a murderer. You were testifying, Captain, that you first heard of the loss of Fort Bennett from that patrol. I am, sir. You're absolutely certain? I swear it. I've given the court a full and complete account. I swear it's true. There's a very simple way to prove this story, Captain. If you just show us that grove of trees, all that's required is evidence of Lieutenant Reese's grave. Where is the grove of trees, Captain? I don't know. You don't know? Gentlemen, I was hopelessly lost in open country. I was half dead from the heat, exhausted, confused. Yes, confused. That's all, Captain. No more questions. The defense rests. The court will be cleared. They don't believe me, I can tell. They don't believe a thing I've said.
May I have your votes, gentlemen? Is the judgment of this court that the prisoner be stripped of all rank, that he be dishonorably discharged from the service, and that he be shot to death in the musketry? I just wanted you to know I'm sorry. I wish I could have helped. Thank you. It's getting late, isn't it? Yes. You haven't eaten anything. I'm not hungry. Captain, the court would have acquitted you if there were any way on earth to believe that story. Davis, listen to me. Cowardice is a terrible thing for a man to live with. It's a terrible thing to die with. If anything can be salvaged from this, it can only come through your facing this morning with courage. Mr. Davis. I can't. Mr. Davis. Get up. Dreadful. Look at him, he's sweating like a pack mule. Get up, Davis. At least stand up. Just a minute. This man was telling the truth. Gentlemen, we must get Captain Davis to the hospital. He's suffering from smallpox.